Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can travel and work fully remotely without your job knowing. So for the first time, um, I decided to pack my bags and travel and work remotely through Tokyo and Bangkok. Some of the benefits of working remotely is that one, if you don't own a home or you're not renting in the United States, living abroad usually is a lot cheaper, especially in places like Thailand, um, South America, whatever. In Thailand, you can get a Skyrise apartment building for about $1,000 a month, and it's a really nice apartment building, maybe nicer than the one I'm currently in, and they have an infinity pool and gym. Other than that, the food and experiences are a lot cheaper. Like I went to a zoo in Tokyo for like $4. Um, in Bangkok, my average meal was about 3 to $5. And if I want food delivery service, I can get maybe two to three days worth of food delivered for about $15. Compare that to the US. If I order one day, I mean one meal of Uber Eats, it comes out to $30 after you add in the delivery fee and the service fee. So you your money's gonna go a lot further than it would here, meaning that you can save more money for either exploring, for a home, or for investments. There's going to be four things that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need a job that lets you work fully remotely. The second thing you will need is a, a router that supports WireGuard. The third thing is you'll need a travel router that also supports WireGuard. The fourth thing is kind of optional, but I recommend reading the book, Four Hour Work Week. It really teaches you a lot about how you can consolidate your work so you can spend less hard time on your actual job and you'll free up more time to do the things that you want to do. The first thing you need to do is set up your travel router and your regular router. I can make a separate video on this uh, with specific details on how this can be done. So what you wanna do is get your router and you're going to connect it to your router at home or it could be a friend's house or a family member's house. And this router is going to connect to the modem or the original router that you have. And you're, you're gonna use that to set up your WireGuard server, which will simulate that your computer is at home. The second thing you'll need to do is set up your travel router to connect to your home router. And this will be your router you carry around with you everywhere, connected to your laptop, your phone, work phone, whatever it is and it will look like you're working directly from home with the same IP address. Another thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to prepare your social media profiles. If you don't use social media, then that's great. But if you do use social media, um, you're gonna want to at first prevent adding any sort of coworkers, your boss, just don't add any of them on social media. And if you already have, um, you probably wanna go through it and block them or prevent them from watching your stories or seeing your posts. I know some social media apps you can do that or you can just not post on social media and just live your life. Maybe record your videos for your memories or for your YouTube channel, uh, whatever it is. Um, another thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to prepare where you're going and make sure the time zones are in your favor. So for me, I work in the Pacific Central time zone in America and I went to Japan and I went to Thailand, which is completely across the globe, and it's about 16 hours ahead. So that means my work schedule was about 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. For me, that kind of works out because I'm more of a night owl. I do enjoy working throughout the night. Um, it kind of makes it more peaceful. Everyone's sleeping, even though I have people like sleeping in my house or whatever, and my coworkers are awake. The fact that the city is asleep just helps me focus and feel more relaxed. So my work schedule was from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. and I would go to bed at 6 a.m. and wake up around maybe uh, 2 to 4 p.m. and that allows me to have maybe a lunch or a late dinner with some friends. I could go out and explore the city at night. I would get home maybe around 9 or 8 or 10 and take a two to three hour nap and then wake up at 12 a.m. to begin my work day. And another thing you wanna do is you want to kind of procure a set of hobbies or activities that you're gonna be telling your coworkers you're doing. So as you, as you go into meetings or whatever it is and they ask you how was your weekend, how was your day, um, you're gonna to want to use these preset activities and hobbies to explain what you're doing throughout your day. 
I'm kind of a boring person, so when someone asks me how my weekend is, I usually say, oh, it was fine, I'm, it was pretty chill, I mainly stayed in the house, did some errands, went to the gym, and I kind of just leave it as that, like I'm just a stay-at-home person, or I was playing video games, whatever it is, you just want to create your hobbies and activities that you're going to tell everyone you're doing while you're actually out traveling, exploring the world, meeting new people, going out for drinks, or whatever it is you're doing as you travel. I just wanna point out that there are inherent risks to doing this, so you wanna do this at your own caution. There is a possibility if you slip up that your job will find out. If it's definitely against their policies, then um, you risk losing your job. So you just wanna make sure that this is something you really wanna do and that you're extremely careful about it. Or you can always ask your job and ask if it's okay that they let you do this. And that's it. Um, if you want the specifics on how to set up the routers, or you want to know, you know how the work setup looks like in terms of your laptop and what I bring when I work, uh, feel free to comment that or give me a follow.